I'm a professional YouTuber and I'm about to balance you on a bunch of towels. Let's see how this works. Hello guys, I thought I'm gonna grab the camera and I'm just, I'm just going to sit down and chat to you guys because I, I'm the weirdo who's like, I'm gone for four months and then I'm back and then I leave again for four months and then I'm back again. You know, it is what it is, okay? It is what it is. It is what it is, but who the hell is that? I'm still in that house filled with construction workers. Who the hell is that guy? Oh my God. I'm gonna have to interrupt this. Great. The one moment that I wanna sit down and talk to my friends, that's what happens. That's why I'm not filming. Indeed, it was a dude who came to sell fruits, which is actually quite cool. Oh, now they're working right under here. Sorry for that sound. Is anybody else like this? You're at home and okay, I'm expecting people. There's constantly just like a, this is like Grand Central Station, basically. Like people come and go, come and go. But then you see somebody, or then like somebody rings the bell and you're like, who that? Who that? Did I invite anyone? <laughs> and you're like almost pissed at the person who dared to, you know, break your peace. <laughs> Anyways, this is a really great start, isn't it? Well, I'm liking it myself. I just wanted to chat to you because I, I wanna show you also a little bit of eye candy. So here's what we got to do, because I'm all over the place. We all know that already, but I'm going to very briefly try, I'm going to try to explain you what's going on um, and why I haven't been posting the way that I have promised a million times I want to post and the way that I would want to be posting. And then I'm going to show you a little bit of eye candy, like things that I've really been liking lately. And I need to crouch and I shouldn't crouch because I had a spinal surgery and you cannot even see that I actually made an effort with my hair not for you guys though but um for myself so what's going on we're still you know in the midst of construction and literally what I'm going to say about this because it's a it's such a long story like everyone's going to snooze when I tell you about it but just very briefly I'm just going to try and very briefly explain to you what's been going on. 12 years ago, I moved in together with my boyfriend and we moved into a, um, a house that we bought back then. And it was our wish to find our, I don't know what you want to call it. I don't like, I don't want to call it a forever home. Sorry for that sound that you hear because I was not able to foresee that, otherwise I wouldn't have picked up the camera. Anyways, I'm gonna put something on my lips as well because I think I look like death. I swear to God. Anyways, a thing that I've really been liking, by the way. <laughs> this is gonna be all over the place, so just put it on whilst you're folding laundry and whatnot. Bobby Brown and their lip tint in bare pink so I've been busy and I don't want to be that I've been so busy I'm like such a busy bee it's not like that but no it's not the right word I've been hectic it's been hectic I, I haven't been hectic it has been a hectic hell of a time so it feels like a lip balm you put it on quickly you do it in the mirror whatever it looks very pink on camera it looks a little less pink in real life okay it looks less pink in real life than it does on camera and I don't like how oh, the seat okay so here's the thing so we moved in together 12 years ago and we we knew that we we're going to okay let's call it a forever home fine but I don't like to call things a forever because you, you don't know what life brings it can hand you lemons like it did to us but my boyfriend wanted to build was not my biggest dream but you compromise and at, at least now i can tell that this whole thing is his fault right no but he wanted to build and sure let's do this let's make it both of our dreams 
and um, it must have been, like, some must have been, seven years ago. Seven years ago, we bought this plot of land where, you know, this is all settled into. Um, and, you know, we started to draw up the plans and then ask for the building permits and the, the bureaucracy and everything. And we we're also building in a region where there are a lot of restrictions and all that kind of stuff. And long story short, we really started with the actual building process five years ago if memory serves me right five or six years ago and the past two years have been extremely intense because we knew we wanted to make a really nice move we didn't have any pressure we're like we're gonna put our house on sale i really look like an egghead but i there's nothing I can do about it, I'm sorry, okay? It's just gonna be the egg, okay? And no chicken. Again, I can be all over the place, I'm trying to just... I should put this higher as well. I, I swear to you, I don't have ADHD, I'm just... I'm just nervous because I'm thinking, who else is going to ring the doorbell or disturb me? Whilst I'm talking to my friends, whom I haven't seen in a long, long time. I could, if I wasn't that lazy pick up the large tripod okay I can't I just I just cannot breathe in your direction but other than that it's gonna be fine I think so started building here the past two years so we we, we really we didn't have any pressure so we were like okay we're gonna put our house on sale the minute that we know that our interior is done here and we can put our house on sale and like really comfortably plan a move and move into like a furnished home. And I was like, whoa, it's gonna be like in those TV shows that everything's ready and prim and proper and you can just move in. Well, <laughs> what's that thing that everybody says? When you make plans, God laughs. So true. In a nutshell, why it has taken so long is that pretty much everything that could go wrong has gone wrong here. Not everything, thank God, because otherwise I would not be talking to you here right now. Um, but pretty much a lot of things that could go wrong went wrong. And some of these things went wrong like twice, thrice, four times. It's been like, it's, it's, it's basically a train wreck, <laughs> this whole project. And the only little... I don't want to sound like really ungrateful or everything, but because I know that there are people who who don't have a home. I didn't have a home in the past. I've I've been in a situation where I didn't have a home. I didn't have a place to go. So I get that. But the thing that kind of keeps me serene and still somewhat wanting to take care of myself with, you know, putting makeup on, because for me, putting makeup on is what stands between me get like getting into a deep depression i'm just gonna say like it is you know i would like nothing more than put my sweatpants on and a grumpy t-shirt and can t-shirts be grumpy no you can see i'm not a native speaker anyways um frumpy i'm so smart <laughs> frumpy t-shirt right Oh my god, correct me if I'm wrong. My cat is meowing behind the door. Shall we let her in? I'm sure it's a her. Hey, you're welcome. Anyways, like my putting makeup on is like a self-care thing for me. Having a space where we know that generally speaking, nobody's gonna come here. People can knock on the door. And that's annoying <laughs> and I hate people but nobody's gonna walk in here but when you exit this space and we call it our master suite because behind there actually I might show it to you do you want me to show it to you behind there is our bedroom and this is my studio I think I've mentioned it before oh my god focus on me 
This is my studio and next door to my studio is our master bathroom. And my daughter currently sleeps here because this couch, wait, out of point 101. This couch opens up and she sleeps here and this is how we are living here with our two cats. And this place is cozy, okay? It's cozy. Everything else is a train wreck. We had a kitchen for a few months which was functioning, I could cook. It was not perfect, things had to be changed. So yesterday they came, they took off part of the kitchen workspace where the sinks were, basically like the heart of the kitchen, right? You need a sink. They took that off because they had to put a new one in that was flawless. And they put the new one in and they realized that the measurements were wrong or it was like, you know, it was not right, it was wonky. So I'm out of kitchen and I had expected to be without the kitchen the entire week, maximum. But now I don't have a kitchen and God only knows when it's going to be fixed. Like, is it gonna take a few weeks? Are they gonna really put pressure to it and do it instantly or not? I, I, I don't know. So I'm kind of like getting really crazy. So that's driving me insane because we lived at a hotel for four months, like in the span of the past year from November to March, we lived in, in a hotel. And I don't wanna go back to eating like prepared food and sandwiches and that kind of stuff because we don't have sinks, because I have to shove everything upstairs into the bathroom. And I get it, like people, there are people who would love to be in this situation because at least I have running water. I know, I'm grateful for running water, but it's just, it's just that sometimes it's easier to be without something than to get it and have it and enjoy it and then have to give it away because I was enjoying my, our kitchen so much. I've been green juicing, I've been like, I've been preparing really good meals for the family and just really been in my jam and I've been really enjoying the kitchen and being like, okay, the rest is going to follow, it's gonna be okay, I, I, can, I can make it. And now it's just, ugh. and the other thing is filming. Like I thought, okay, my daughter goes to school first of September, I had like a whole list of videos that I wanted to film and guess what? no filming happened even in the summer i just i was gone for most of the summer and when i was back i just felt that i sunk back into that that oh, that draining hole it's just uh it's also the unknown like if somebody because we don't know how long this all is gonna take there are so many mistakes that have been made where we have brought new people in who have to redo someone else's mistakes and when it when it comes to like all of the technical elements and stuff like that first of all you got to you got to really work hard to find somebody who wants to fix somebody else's mess and then at the end of the road you're going to you will have paid like everything like five times over which is you know, it's just, it, it mm. I told my boyfriend, let's stop this. Before I went on vacation, I said, this is, this is it. I cannot take it anymore. We have to, we have to, I don't know. We have to just uh, flee the sinking boat. And it's, it's been a little bit of a tough, tough going. And that's the thing. I, we don't know how long it's gonna take. If somebody was to tell me like, hey girl, you need to strap up, this is gonna take 60 days or plus minus, I get it, it's a building. We just don't know, we just don't know and, and it's, it's very frustrating. And then when it comes to luxury, I've, I've, I've gotten so many messages from you guys. I thought people will have forgotten about me and be like, oh, there was this girl, but she's not there anymore, thankfully. 
And I've gotten so many messages where I'm like, oh, have you been shopping around, doing things? Uh, I Like, I haven't. My last uh, purchase, you have all seen her. Hold on. Thank you very much. You have seen her. Oh, disco ball, disco ball. La, 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 la. And honestly, I have yet to take her out, but personally, I think it's for me and my style, which is non-existent, let's be honest, this um, is a bag that I, just for me, this says fall. I don't know why, because I see people rocking it during the summer, but for me, this is something that I want to wear with like really dark clothes and just have this one pop. So yeah, this was my li last purchase and I, I showed it to you, but I did do a little sneaky purchase in between, which I haven't shared. I'm gonna share it with you in a second. Do you wanna like see what bags I used in the summer? I think it's kind of boring because summer is already over. I don't think anyone's, okay, if it moves, this is because it's not a professional tripod. You are, do you wanna see actually? Because this is quite spooky. <laughs> There you are. Oh, very professional, if I say so myself. Um, I have four bags here that I have been rotating quite a lot. Well, it's a lie, but it's also not a lie. Okay, first bag that I'm gonna show you is this one. Oh my God, the camera is dropping. Oh my God, this is not gonna end well, but why am I still doing this? The Gucci Soho Disco, this is just such an easy bag. Such an easy bag. It can take anything. And I'm actually waiting for it to go way more out of shape than what it is. And I've I've enjoyed it a lot. Uh, this is a, such a great thing to throw around in the summer. And when I don't want the logo, I just turn it around and it's just the most boring, plain, simple little camera bag. So this one I really like because it's all weather approved. Mind you, I would never let it like an entirely soak in water, but you know. The bag I'm currently carrying is this one. The Longchamp Le Pliage. It's the tiniest version. Well, it's not the tiniest. Technically, it's not the tiniest uh, Le Pliage, is it? Well, it's like a tiny top handle format because they do have one that's crossbody, don't they? Like a tiny one. Anyways, this is like the tiny top handle format. Uh, format. I've been a huge fan of the Le Pliage this entire summer. I have wanted a Prada nylon bag for forever. Well, this is not technically an entirely nylon bag because it's satin. It's just sitting, sitting there, being all satiny and all. I don't know what that was. I've wanted a Prada nylon bag for forever. I have looked at a few vintage ones because there's a specific shape that I'm hunting and I've seen it on the streets. I'm not sure if I want to like spend on a brand new nylon bag because their the prices are going up and up and up and I know my brain knows okay the nylon bag you stupid if you spend so much. Um, so Longchamp is the great little alternative and gives you the nylon kick that you need and such a great under the radar not in your face and still very practical bag. I've used them the entire summer. I've had my like normal medium sized pliage and it's, it's it's been just great. I absolutely love it. I love the carefreeness of it. Then um, I'm gonna show you the bag that I purchased, which was also a bag that I have been lusting for so long. And the exact color that I wanted, because uh, if you know me, you know I could buy any bag in black and I would be so happy, but I'm forcing myself to really enjoy colors and, and just, you know, doing things that are a little bit out of the box, a little bit, well, this is quite a lot, but um, just give some oomph. I, I feel I have way too many like, just basic or not basic but just like staple plain bags and now I just want to have some fun 
uh, some of you are going to um, vomit a little bit like you did with the Prada one, but I have wanted this bag ever since it came out, but I wasn't sure should I, should I not. I'm going to give you a hint and the real bag obsessed people are going to know which bag is it. Do you know? Post it down, please. If you do know, if you don't know, you don't know and I don't blame you, but I got myself the pouch, the Bottega Veneta pouch and I got it in the color caramel and I got it off Vestiaire. Now, a quick, quick little plug in here. A lot of people have been asking me about Vestiaire Collective. What do you think of it? Where do you sell your bags? Where uh, do you buy your bags? I have always done everything on Vestiaire. It's been a few years since I sold a bag, so, and also bought, like, before I bought this one, I think I bought a bag in 2020 during COVID. It was my Proenza, um, and I haven't bought since. And they have changed some rules, and they have changed also their commissions. I think that they're somewhat more customer-friendly. But when it comes to, do I vouch for them? Do I not vouch for them? I really cannot say. I've had a couple of experiences with them that were a little bit eerie. I'm not gonna lie, they they are they are maybe worth a little story time. But I've also had like, you know, 15 or 20 or 25 transactions with them that have gone smoothlessly. Smoothlessly? My goodness. No, no, no. No, the opposite. Seamlessly. So it, so I, I'm, I have a little bit of mixed feelings. The one thing that I don't like about them is that they're not transparent about customer service when if you know you cannot pick up a phone and call them. And that is something that is very fishy. I don't know, maybe they have already changed that, I'm not sure, but you should be able to contact somebody via phone. Um, having said that, have a paper trail. So on, on you know, having said that, Sometimes it's better to text in a chat and like print screen like a sicko or send mails because then you do have a paper trail and then you have something to, you know, show as a proof if they start telling you that no, this was not the agreement we made, blah, 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 blah. But my latest experience, flawless. No, no drama, nothing. This bag cost me less than half retail less than half retail this has gone become so expensive that i really regret not buying it i remember when it came out and was like <laughs> so expensive i'm not gonna buy a bag like this so expensive well look at me now but i have been loving it i'm obsessed with it i'm just it's a dumpling and it fits so much i have been using this the, the entire summer my boyfriend hates that bag but I really don't care. I've, I've like, I've gone way past the line where I care because I love that color. I have grown into liking browns and beiges, which first of all, didn't like that much before. And then I didn't like it on myself because I'm a pretty pale person. Like even in summer, I'm, I have a tan guys <laughs> and I look like, and I look like a paper sheet, but, um, which is fine, you know, you shouldn't like obsessively seek for our son because we want to live long, right, don't we? Um, but I have really just been liking earthy tones on myself and this one, oh, I love them. I'm going to show you another thing that I got. Just going to put it out there, this is a reality. <laughs> channel i don't um i don't aim to show perfection here so things that i show are true to life you're gonna see very hairy slippers <laughs> these i got from jimmy choo it's because we have cats here and we've got carpet so you just you just you're just gonna have to live with it but these ones i got from jimmy choo and these together are a match made in heaven holding something close to you. Hold me close, a tiny dancer. Um, first famously sung by Phoebe Buffay and now Britney Spears and Elton John. <laughs> so this has been a bag that I've obsessed 
over the entire summer it was a great purchase would i buy it in another color like would i get a second one i'm not sure but i love this one so much that if it caught fire which don't you dare then i, I and i love i love the fact that it doesn't have logos because you know me i'm either here or there i'm not no, I'm either there or there. I'm not here. Okay, well, never mind. Because the other bag that I have been enjoying carrying around, which uh, I know a lot of people are sick of, is the Speedy Bundelier 25. I love this bag because I don't baby it whatsoever. I don't baby any of my bags, but uh, certainly will baby this one more than any other. Having said that, I did recently pour an entire glass of water on that bag. But it survived so no harm no foul this one i love it because it's not overly huge although sometimes i do wish i i'd gotten it in a 30 but then other times i love that i got it in this size because it can be a really nice um tiny is not the word but i'm huge so this looks tiny on me and i can wear it as a tiny cross body bag but I can also just fill it up, you know? I can I can actually put like a huge water bottle inside. This is a one and a half liter water bottle. No, it's, this is a one, one liter water bottle. So it's double the size of a normal one. It just, it just goes in there. And I, I just like it. And the thing that I like a lot is when, when all of that leather turns really, really brown. I love speedies when they look really battered and i like the speedy look i don't like the brand new ones i don't like the oh i just got it out of the store even though we all have to go through this awkward period <laughs> it feels like you know teenage years when you have awkward a lot of acne or whatnot those who did have that you know what i mean and those who didn't whatever i don't care that you have perfect skin but um i love speedies when they are really just worn in i love the vibe where you it almost feels like you got it from your grandma that's what i love so those are the bags that i have been rotating a lot lately and in between those bags i've also obviously grabbed my neverfull as well it will always remain a staple and also I'm waiting for them to patiently become really, really, really dark. So that's it. I don't know. This was a pretty useless video, wasn't it? Right? You didn't even see my cat. And... <sighs> yeah. It is what it is. I hope to film more. I would like to... I would, I would actually really like you to tell me... I don't usually ask for help. I'm crappy at asking help. Like, my friends know that. I I don't ask. I have never asked. If I ask you for help, that means that I'm almost dying. And I have my spinal surgery to show for that. I had a massive, massive hernia. And I almost landed in a wheelchair because of me just not wanting to admit that I was in heavy, heavy discomfort and pain. So, yeah, uh, I don't usually ask for help, but I would really like to know what do you want to see here on my channel, knowing that videos might be filled with sounds like... And I can't help it. Let me know. I, I want to do things, but I am also... Every time I pick up the camera, I'm like, girl, it's so boring. Like, do you really think people are going to watch your videos? And when I drive around, I'm like, maybe I could do a car vlog. And some of you said, do a car vlog. And I'm like, yeah, but ugh, it's boring. <laughs> it's so boring. I don't know. So let me know what you want to see. If there's anything I can... Basically, I'm an empty vase. There's nothing I can give you that you don't already have. I guess. Well, that was that. <laughs> um thanks so much for watching and sorry about it it was rubbish but uh maybe i'll see you again if you do choose to come back that would be great <laughs> uh 
Love you guys. Bye.